What is going on guys, Wiser here, and I am coming to you with a very special One Hive Labs video. Um, first of all, we just did another mix scram set up by the man himself, DWS, Do Work Son. Uh, he does so much for the clans down there. Um, we got a mix scram together with a bunch of the Venom guys, bunch of all the all people from the 2.0 family, 2.0 Invicta, and the wonderful group of people over at Red Eclipse. And their sister clan, Savage Sleuths, kind of just pulled a bunch of people together, had some fun. And, yeah, it was great. Let's just check on what happened. Um, the RE side won 103 to 99. Obviously, the score doesn't dictate a heck of a lot because when we do scrims like this, it's just for fun. So we don't have any bully attacks, nothing. Um, you know, just just a lot of fun, right? Guys base building. You get a chance to hit some of your own clan members. Um Again, just a lot, a lot of good stuff here. Uh, this is really what the Clash community lives for, for uh, just community events like this. And thank you very much, DWS, for setting this stuff up. <clears throat> um, didn't end up coming away with any uh, TH10 triples in here or anything. There were a lot of Town Hall 10s. There was quite a few, though, uh, Town Hall 8s, um, kind of near the bottom as well. So that was kind of neat, I believe. How many were in there? I don't know. We're going to have to check things out. <clears throat> Anyhow, um, so I was going to take this opportunity. I'm going to roll through a bunch of these attacks while I talk about some stuff, but primarily I wanted to discuss the huge announcement that just came out from Supercell uh, discussing modding and discussing what their stance is going to be uh, with, with this uh, little nugget. <laughs> or large nugget I should say you know this has been a, a huge controversy within Clash of Clans and finally 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 Supercell came out and said something about it now <clears throat> let's just start off I'm going to jump into an attack here so you guys aren't staring at nothing while I'm blabbing on and on let's just go right to the bottom check out some of these Town Hall 8s because these guys are just pimps down here oh good old KO yeah perfect attack to start with <clears throat> so first I wanted to talk a little bit about the history of modding within online video games. And what you guys might not know, um, well, well, first let me say Clash of Clans has given me the opportunity to notice something about the online gaming community because Clash of Clans is a tablet game. And there is a huge part of the community that this is the only real online game they ever have played or ever will play, which is a big difference. You know, if I go on and I play some Dota or Counter-Strike or, you know, whatever the game I'm, I'm kind of playing at the time is, generally most of the people that you're faced up with or grouped up with are guys that game online and and play multiple games online and I'm not saying that there's any problem with that i just think that's one of the really cool things about clash of clans is that there's such a huge pool community pool of people who aren't necessarily would consider themselves a, a an online gamer a hardcore gamer right like they play this as a tablet game and that's that's the only game they've ever seen or want to play or any, have any desire to play and that is really cool but with that being said I think a lot of people don't fully understand uh, how predominant modding is within the online gaming community. Now, when I say modding, um, you look at a game like Arma or you look at a game like an even better example would be uh, StarCraft. StarCraft 2 was one of the biggest modding platforms for any game. One of the coolest things about owning StarCraft 2 is the fact that you're not buying just StarCraft 2. You're buying thousands, literally thousands of other games that use the StarCraft platform that these, these de uh, not developers, I don't know what you want to call them, but these, these guys who create these modded versions of the game can use StarCraft and 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 come out with these games for people to play that are not have nothing to do with the vanilla game um they're a huge variation of the or the they're a huge variation of the vanilla game um but the bottom line is that these guys will go and create these modded versions of the game they will at that point have the opportunity to either put them on a private server or have them within the game so that anybody um playing that modded version is still all on the same playing field 
right? You cannot play that modded version. I, you know, right now as a, an example, I'm playing this modded version of Armor 3. It's just, it's a different map, a newly created map with, um, you know, your guy starts with certain things that you normally wouldn't start with. Um, there's just, there's dynamic events within the game that are created that don't exist in just the normal vanilla game. Um, just as an example, I mean, it, everything doesn't always align, but I hope you guys understand exactly what I'm trying to say, that modding is a huge piece of the online gaming community, and it is not frowned upon and there's nothing wrong with it that's just you know these guys that like to create these different versions of a game and g allow a bunch of other people to to play that game now <laughs> the primary difference i can think of between clash of clans and games like that like starcraft where you can go on and you can choose from a thousand different modded versions of the game is that if you choose to play that modded version of the game, if I go in and, and this game armor that I'm playing with, every single person that I can encounter or face has to have that mod. Has to. They can't even play that game. They play on, you know, you play on a, a private server or a sanctioned server by the, the, you know, the company that released the game that says, okay, you guys can play this modded version, but... It's only for people who decide to who log on to this server that all are going to have this modded version. You can't have some people with the modded version having these special guns or special whatever the hell it is and play against people who just want to play the vanilla original game. So you, so there's that choice. There's that option. If you want to play a, play the different different version that's clearly your choice, but everyone that you play against is also going to have that version. Clash of Clans does not have that. Clash of Clans does not have private servers where you can mod, you can do whatever you want. And you know what? Maybe maybe with this announcement, maybe this is what those groups like iMod and XMod need to look at. Maybe they need to try and reach out to Supercell and say, hey, look, there's a huge community out there that wants to play this modded version of your game. Can we create some sort of special servers that you would choose to join that would still all be linked to supercell but every person that has their account on that server would be at least known that they should have that mod installed or they're going to be playing at a disadvantage now again this is nothing nothing personal that's just it's the way people choose to have fun playing a game so Guys who mod, they're not, you know, a lot of a lot of fair play people make them out to be like the devil and <laughs> like, you know, they would <laughs> like they'd sell their own children at times. Like the, the things I see flying around Twitter are just ridiculous. OK, guys, modding exists in the online community predominantly. And I just wanted to make that very clear. Th there's a huge problem with modding in Clash of Clans, mainly because you don't know. It's the unknown. Because we're playing, you know, the majority of the people that, that are fair play are playing because they choose to play the vanilla game. They want to play the game as it was handed down to us by Supercell and compete within those uh, those guidelines and those sort of walls, however you want to say it. And the problem is when you mix modding into that, no one knows. You start questioning your own clan members, other clan members, other, other clans. You know, some clans that say they're fair play, but they're not. You just you have no idea because there's not there there isn't that restriction. There isn't that that you know iron fist laid down saying, hey, if you're gonna be on a vanilla server and be playing original Clash of Clans, if we catch you using a third party program to change Clash of Clans to however you want it, you're gonna get banned, and that's that's what it's coming down to. So it's unfortunate for the modding community because. There's nothing wrong with these guys. They, they, the modding communities exist within every, almost every single online game out there. However, there needs to be that that definitive line. And if for people who choose to play it how, as its original state, they need to be given that option as well. Their game cannot be ruined because someone else wants to play it a, a different way. I'm not saying that someone else wanting to play it a different way, there's nothing wrong with that. But you can't mix the two. You can't. And unless Supercell is going to give that divided line and say, okay, modded modded accounts, you play on this server. And vanilla accounts, you play on this server. 
and on the the original server we're going to be doing checks to make sure nobody has these modded accounts and everyone else could play on their own and do whatever the heck they want on these crazy servers that that aren't tied into the vanilla servers i don't know whatever it takes but the bottom line is you cannot mix the two you can't because uh, let's let's be honest modders are just doing modding because that's the way they choose to play the game well we choose to play the game in its original state so when modders come in and interfere with that well that's not really fair to us right we don't want to go and download these third-party programs to practice attacks and practice different styles of attacks and and do this open sandbox mode or whatever the hell it is that that they do we don't want that so we shouldn't have to be subjected to that and i i think that's only fair to say to the commodity community there's nothing wrong with you guys. There's, you know, I'm never ever would ever say anything like that because I've been an online gamer my whole life. I see mods go in and out. Sorry, I kind of got blabbing on here. <clears throat> you know, I see mod, I, I see, uh, I see modded games all the time. I play modded games when I choose to. But the bottom line is, when I'm playing a modded game, I know every single other person in that game is also playing that modded game, and that is the big difference uh, with with Clash Clans because we don't have that. So until we have that. Things have to stay on the vanilla level because you can't mix the two because it, it, it isn't fair. And that's where the word fair play comes in. I think that's that word is a little bit skewed because just because you're playing, you know, most modded clans would rather face modded clans because when they don't face modded clans, there's just no competition. And I feel the only reason that modded clans would want to face a fair play clan is because of the relentless chirping i guess or the relentless you know bashing that goes on between the fair play community and the modding community and it sucks and we don't want that the fair play community doesn't want that we don't have to be complaining about you know being hunted by a, a modding clan um because we're there's that there's that divided line no we we just we just want to be able to play our own game on our own terms that's what we fought for a range clan wars so much because if a fair play clan could just arrange the wars that they ch they chose to to do we wouldn't have to worry about facing a modding clan we wouldn't have to worry about mixing those two like i had said because we'd only face other clans that we knew were fair play now obviously that's a little more difficult to implement but it'll be very interesting to see how this affects the world of clash of clans mm -mm -mm. recap juice because realistically this is going to open up the door now because if now that they're making this divided line now that they're saying look if you're playing clash of clans you were playing the original clash of clans how we handed it down for you guys to play and no questions asked that's going to open the doors for a lot of really cool things right we i, I know other t uh, youtubers have talked about this about doing in-game clan tournaments you know a, a much a much less skewed ranking system um it's just it, it realistically the competition i mean i saw a i saw a tweet i don't know the legitimate uh, uh, the legitimacy of the tweet but i'm pretty sure it was from uh koopa troopa from uh reddit troopers talking about how their clan is disbanding and how uh i guess the banning modding is going to be the end of the uh the competitive meta game i think that's a bunch of baloney to me this is actually going to finally rebirth the clan war system because the competition is still going to be there but we just know that now the the top ranked clans are going to be clans that got there using their own skill and using you know their two attacks in war and that's it you plan your stuff out and you attack and the best man wins and it has nothing to do with the guy who had the most amount of time to sit down in, with this modding program and practice his attack over and over again until he got it right because let's be honest it, it modding kind of turns into a time sink right if you have more time to sit down and practice that attack on a town hall 11 over and over and over again at some point you're probably going to get it right so realistically modding just kind of, kind of comes down to who has the most time to sink in to practicing these attacks or who gets lucky enough to do it faster i guess i mean i don't know i've never been in a modding war but that's the only only way i could think that it would make a difference because all you're doing is practicing 
practicing your army over and over again, right? And it does. I can imagine the amount of planning, the amount of effort, and the amount of time it takes you sometimes to crack one of those max 10s or a really tough 11. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy to think about. But that's all it is. It's a time sink, right? Whereas if you're, you're, you're playing legitimately and you're just using your, your two attacks, really what it comes down to is, is yeah, a little bit of luck in there, obviously. Um, but, but it's just the, the ranking system is going to be more pure now. It's going to be purely based on human success, not necessarily human time sink. Um, I just think I, I, I'm really interested to see what happens. Now, obviously, I mean, it's it's going to come down to how, the longevity of what Supercell can do with this. Um, I mean, none of us really know how effective uh, their detection software is going to be. There, no one's going to know how long, realistically, that this uh, this is going to last. Um, we can only hope that it that it's permanent because. Like I had mentioned in the beginning, I really think that the modding community needs to reach out to Supercell and say, hey, look, this is how we enjoy playing your game. We don't want to quit playing your game, but we will unless unless we're given an option to play on our own modded servers. And maybe that's the answer. I don't even know if that's possible. Again, I'm just speaking from the top of my head, from being an experienced online gamer, seeing modded communities all over the place and how they thrive within certain game systems. And Supercell does not have that yet. I don't even know if they have the option to. But maybe that's what needs to be done. Because, you know, I, I, I should I'd be careful. But I, I do feel bad for them a little bit. Because there's a lot of guys out there that, that this is just how they enjoy playing the game. And now they're not going to be able to, to play it that way. And unfortunately for myself, I, I prefer playing the vanilla class clans. And, and you know, doing it how, how Supercell intended it to be done. However, that doesn't mean that everybody chooses to play it that way. And, you know, I do feel a little bad that there is no option for these guys than other than to, to play it our way. Um, I don't think that's entirely fair. And maybe that maybe that's that's something that needs to be explored down the road here. But I do think Supercell is making the right step and the right choice here by by starting this process and really separating the two and saying, look, if you're using third party programs, you're done. That's it. You're going to be banned, maybe with a warning ban. And then if it happens again, permanent and you're done and you lose your account, everything that you've put into that account, because even modders, yeah, modders buy gems, modders, <laughs> right? They're, they're just like us. Um, they just they just happen to, again, I can't really, I'm trying to be very careful with my wording here because I've never modded, so I can't really speak for them. I can just speak from what I've seen. And to me, you know, they farm... A little different and <laughs> that's another piece of things that I think is really going to change and another piece that affects the vanilla community versus the farming community not even modders that use it for war think about the farm botters how is that going to change our loot system right now that there's not going to be thousands literally thousands of these Chinese farm botters that are constantly attacking and constantly hitting these top bases um, how is that going to affect the loot pool? There is going to be, in my opinion, I think there's going to be so much more loot out there. There's going to be so many more dead bases out there. It is going to make the vanilla farming so much better just because there's not thousands and thousands of these farm botters out there that are attacking every 15 minutes without someone even being there, right? Like to me, the, like those things are things that ruin the game for 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 vanilla people, right? When I say ruin the game, I mean ruin the game for people who choose to play the game how it was handed down to now modders don't choose that and that's fine again i cannot stress this more if you choose to play the modding a modding version of a game there's nothing at all wrong with that the only thing that's wrong with that is supercell has not allowed us to have the decision within game to either play the vanilla version or a modded version i again i, I don't know the possibility of that even happening however that is the big problem because you can't mix the two. You just can't. <clears throat> so, again, I, I think this week was a huge week for Clash of Clans. And I really see a lot of doors opening up. I'm really excited to see how 
how this pans out and i think a whole a whole lot of people are i think even some of the people from the money community are because it must get boring after a little while i mean this this might give some otters a chance to start fresh um one thing i do know i can say from the one hive leadership is that at least known modders up to this point um still are probably not going to be welcomed uh, at the, at first, at least in, in fair play clans, until we see how things pan out, because we don't know how long this is going to last. Again, it's nothing personal against guys that we know mod. I mean, we have some guys that were great life, like longtime members that we caught mod and uh, modded, whether it's farm botting or or war modding, and we kicked them out. Now we're not going to let them back in because what happens if a couple weeks down the road, all of a sudden, boom, we're back to square one, and and the modders have figured out how Supercell is is detecting this stuff and works through these loopholes and gets around it um we don't know so we can't put ourselves in position of having all these guys on board now that are fair play because they have to be fair play and then all of a sudden boom we go back to square one and then we're trying to filter out all these guys because we have all these people who used to mod that we don't know we like again it, this is the problem this is this is what it comes down to you start blaming your own clan members you start blaming it, it's just it, it you can't have that unknown if everyone's on the same playing field it has to be known that everyone's on that playing field and that's just the only way to do it guys and i'm uh, modding community again i'm sorry i'm sorry that you are no longer allowed to play the game you the way you want to play the game um I, I can't speak for Supercell. I can't speak for anyone except for myself here. But it, it sucks for you guys. I get it. And uh, hopefully maybe maybe Supercell will listen to you and, and have some sort of private mod servers that you guys can play uh, play on like that. But for the time being, unfortunately, no. Uh, if you're going to use a third-party program, you run a serious, serious risk of having your account banned potentially permanently. So... Just be very careful out there, guys. Um, this is going to be a pinnacle time for Clash of Clans and the war community. And I am very excited to see how it plays out. And uh, I hope that a lot of you guys are as well. <clears throat> and we'll just kind of see how things go over the next month. And uh, and see, see what kind of damage Supercell can do here. And what kind of uh, claim Supercell can make back on their games. Because it's not only this game, but they want to protect all their games. And I get it. I know Clash Royale had some problems. I mean, I'm sure if you guys watch my videos or hear me talk or see me on Twitter, you guys know I hate, hate, hate Clash Royale, a.k.a. Cash Royale. Just because, personally, I thought it was Supercell's just cash way to way to cash in on the fame of fame of clash of clans and just really pump and jag everyone else uh, all the mindless sheep for more money saying hey let's play a card game of clash of clans but hey just pump in a bunch of money you can buy a bunch of cards and then uh, i don't know anyways don't want to get in on that but clash clash royale had their own problems within within that game about rampant cheating and i'm sure sure other games do is they're you know boom beach and stuff so they are doing their best to really safeguard all their games, and that's got to be step one. That has to be step one. you got to safeguard the vanilla version. Once that happens, who knows? Maybe you can branch out from there, but only time is going to tell. So again, guys, um, it is what it is. Let's just see how this plays out. I think some really cool things are going to be happening within Clash of Clans now, um, especially if this is as successful as it sounds like it's going to be. And if we do clean up the vanilla version of Clash of Clans, then that means really cool things on the horizon. So stay tuned. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, hope I didn't sound like an idiot, but uh, those are just my feelings on the situation. Um, you know, I've been an online gamer my whole life, so I can understand where the mod community is coming from. But you have to, you have to have that choice. You have to give that choice. You cannot have one mixed with the other. It just it just makes for for the disaster that Clash of Clans was up until this week. So let's hope uh, let's hope for some good things on the horizon, and we shall see how things pan out. So that'll do it for your wisdom from Wiser Guys. Just trying to help you beg that next tree star. Till then, I'm out.